peeps. Hey, I'm up in my studio and I'm about to do a multi-part video on this really cool project that I was asked to do by my new friends at Crosscut Sewing Company. Um, let me show you. Here's the website. It's the cutest little website. It's called Crosscut Sewing Co. Company Co. Dot com. You can find them there. Um, it is a uh, mom named Stephanie. This is what I really like about this company. So Stephanie began, uh, learned to sew and began sewing when, after she became a mom, which I thought was kind of cool because I, although I sewed when I was younger, I didn't become a quilter until after I became a mom. And I've been doing this about 15 years, so um, this is kind of fun. So Stephanie learned to sew and then she started doing some classes and then she decided to open up her business and she also started much like me. She started in the marketing and advertising world. I started in the graphic design world. So we're doing something a little bit different than we were doing before, which I think is also pretty cool. So Stephanie's store, um, Crosscut Sewing Company, is located in Melrose, Massachusetts. It's a sewing store with quilting. She's, they do quilting, they do sewing. Um, they have um, all kinds of different types of patterns in there for fashion sewing and quilting. And I thought this was really interesting about her. She, she does birthday parties in there. So they teach kids how to sew and they also have birthday parties for sewing in there, which I thought was really awesome. So anyway, Stephanie has this cool project that she asked me to do. This is called the Maker Basket, and this is how the package comes. I'm gonna get it a little close to the camera so that you can see. Um, it's little boxes, storage boxes, that you make from your own fabrics, or you can get a kit. This little kit that Stephanie sent me is, it costs $6.50. It comes with the cardboard box base and it also comes with the handles and the hardware to do it for $6.50. We'll give this a shot and then we'll see how the maker box from Crosscut Company comes. And what Stephanie did, um, she asked what colors I wanted to do and I told her my favorite color was teal so she could just pick some fabrics and she sent me some fabrics too. So here are the fabrics for one. It looks like she sent me enough to do two boxes. I'm going to have to look and see what the sizes are and here are the fabrics for the other box. So this is going to be really cute and maybe help me organize some of my scraps up in the sewing room. So let's see how I do and I'll be back. This is the one I did first. Isn't she pretty? And then I've got it all full of my scraps and I kind of want to dance around with the handles a little bit so you can see that it's really quite sturdy. Um, this is the one thing that I was a little concerned about with um, the box, the maker basket itself because it was a cardboard box that you started with, but it's actually really quite sturdy. Now in the instructions it says, let me show you um, the picture. It shows a little picture of a box being taped within an inch of its life with duct tape. Um, that's probably not a bad idea. Uh, I think that if you did it with duct tape, it would be so incredibly sturdy that you would never be concerned about it at all. So anyway, here's my, my first one. I used the lining. The lining is the fabric that um, Stephanie sent me and then I picked some outside fabric from my stash. Um, here is the medium basket. These fabrics all came from uh, Stephanie. See? The handles turned out great. Um, the fabric inside, and I put all my petals in here. So this is the basic premise. This is the box. This is the small one that I'm in the process of finishing, but I kind of didn't want to finish it because I wanted to, you to see what I did. Um, and then I'll take pictures of it afterwards for the blog. But this is the box. I covered the box really well. I don't use duct tape, but I have packing tape, and I covered the entire bottom, the sides, everything of the box with the packing tape so it would be nice and sturdy. And so this is the base. And I, I know what you're thinking, well, it's just a cardboard box, but it really frankly isn't. Um, the thing about this kit is that the boxes come perfectly sized. The instructions come perfectly sized. 
it does come as I showed you with the handles and the brads to put the handle on the side they're very easy to use and these are leather handles um, I didn't realize it until I pulled them out of the box they are they're really nice handles so in my opinion for six dollars and fifty cents I don't think you can go wrong with this because they are the cutest little boxes um, they're sturdy enough that you could give them as a gift they stack kind of this way I just think they're the cutest little things they're really easy to put together once the handles on it's I mean all set um, I really I really like I enjoyed doing it so much that we're only a day away it actually took me as bad as I am at reading patterns it actually took me probably an hour to do one and I have a lot of disruptions so let me show you um, what I did because I had to do something cute with the last one I was gonna do it with the first one but I actually couldn't find my template um, I had to put petals on mine so I took the the outside of the fabric and I just did a couple little flowers for spring um, and then let me show you I think I can do it just right here on the table you can kind of see what's going on go down just a little bit all right this is my base that I made and let me show you just how perfectly sized this thing is when I go to put it on the box it fits super snug around the outside now I followed the instructions completely and the instructions say to use a half inch seam allowance and I did but I mean this thing fits like a glove and so that's what I mean about having the kit all in one where the box and the handles and the pattern I mean who wants to mess with the measuring and figuring out the seam allowances and exactly I mean that fits so very perfectly I was quite impressed and I mean it just looks great so I'm very pleased oh I got a little spot where my seam didn't want to come off the edge there we go all better so I'm quite impressed with the instructions and the way it fits um, as you can see from the medium the liner is a little bigger than the outside of the box the outside fits snug like a glove the insides a little bit loose I think you need to do that so that you can um, tuck up under here um, so the basic premise is you use the cardboard box you create the outside you create the lining the lining slips inside the box folds over the outside and then you use your fusible and this is stitch witchery so it's very skinny but if you have a double-sided fusible at home you can just cut strips what I did is I cut um, pieces that just fit the sides of the box um, I just clipped it like right here and then that way I could slip it right underneath and press it down and then it all gets pressed in and then once it's all pressed down you attach the handles so let me show you a couple of the tools I had a really hard time laying the body parts of the box out flat on the ironing board so I used this which I think is a handy tool this is for pressing um, curves when you're dressmaking um, this one's called the so perfect it's got like a little wool on the top and and um, muslin on the bottom it's very hard and stiff um, this worked really well the other thing that I have is this little guy which I think is a clover design I have to think I have to find out but anyway this little guy it's just a pop-up uh, pressing mat it goes right back down um, the idea behind this is that you can slip an entire sleeve on this but because it's raised up off the board and it has less of a space it's much easier to lay your uh, project with any kind of curve or you know small seam or something like that you can do it over this so I highly recommend buying um, a different type of pressing service if you have trouble getting uh, your pieces out flat on your pressing mat so that's one of the tools that I used um, I think I may have talked about it in the first part of the movie but this is shape flex um, let me put it up here so you can see it it's by Pellon it is a fusible 
interfacing that is kind of cottony and I used that to press into the fabric so that the fabrics would be much more sturdy um, and it works really well. They're nice and sturdy and it just has a little bit more body so when I press it, it sits nice on the box. Um, another cool tool that I used, I just happen to have it and use it a lot um, and it's actually shown in the instructions right here. It's called the Hot Hammer. And I have two of them. This is a tool by Clover. It's basically a fabric ruler. It's kind of feltish. It's not felt, but it's kind of feltish. Um, but it's a, a ruler, and I have one like this, which is just a little bit shorter, and it's got a little curve to it. So if you need to do any kind of curve folding, you can do that. So if you'll notice here on the edge of the hot hammer, there are measurements, quarter, half inch, uh, three quarters of an inch up on up, and they go across the ruler. So in the measurement, in the um, instructions, it says when you're pressing, you wanna press up a quarter of an inch and then you're gonna fold again to three quarters of an inch. You're gonna press this outside of your lining so it's nice and stiff. So I used this, I went all the way around the lining and pressed a perfect three quarter inch seam with that got it nice and stiff and sturdy so when I slipped it over the box it was easy to find that seam so that's one of the things that says in the instructions it says um, use a seam gauge or a hot hammer seam gauges typically are made out of metal and they just absorb the heat so it's hot on your hands this one doesn't so if you don't have a hot hammer this is one of um, Penny's pointers um, I actually have had these for sale at Lancaster because I tend to only take the tools I use and if I think it's super useful um, I put it for sale and so the hot hammers are ones I keep a lot along with these guys you know so if you needed to uh, when you go to turn it inside out if you want to press in uh, uh, poke in I, I hate the term poke but kind of poke into the seam a little bit to turn it there are two different ones that I have this one's called the Hold It Precision Stiletto. It has a stiletto end. I, I don't like to turn seams like that like with this very often because I think it pokes in. And then this is kind of like the pressing finger, so it resists the heat and you can lay it down on your fabric instead of using your finger and it saves your uh, Teflon hands. So those are the tool, that's a tool that I use a lot. And then this one is called the Point to Point Turner and it's got, it's actually a Hera marker it um, will press, finger press a seam, and it also has less of a pointy um, end. So this one's really handy to press those seams out. So when you go to put the handle on, you're gonna mark the spot where you put the handle in, and then you're gonna poke a hole all the way through the box and the two layers of fabric in order to be able to put your brad in to hold the handle on. Um, that was what I was really concerned about not having, and then I remembered that I used to be a scrapbooker and I have kept this little box, this little metal box, in my drawer uh, next to my ironing board for years, not knowing if I'd ever need it. It has a teeny tiny little thick mat. Inside um, of this kit, it had tweezers, it has a little pokey stick, a little set of pliers. This, this is an awl, and it has three different tips on it and you see how it's got like a little hole in the end of it. So if you par poke it, put it down over top of the dot, the mark, which by the way, I used a fabric marking pen to mark the spot for the hole. I just lay this down over top of that hole and then put the box over top of the little mat. So I put it here on the corner of my cutting mat and I just laid this heavy mat down I put the box around the corner, I put this over the hole, and I beat on the hammer pretty hard. Um, not enough to go through the little mat, but enough to go through all three layers. And then the actual fabric, you can't see it, but it's like stuck up in the tip. And this one is originally for doing paper, for marking holes for brads for, for scrapbooking and papers and stuff, but it worked really well for the fabric. And so, um, I had this, I had no idea. My son came into my studio and went, oh, look at the tiny hammer. And I said, get out. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, but anyway, I had this little kit in the drawer 
and uh, it worked super well. So if you ever need something like that, this I found in the scrapbook store or scrapbook online or whatever, this one's by Making Memories. Um, but it's a handy little toolkit if you ever need to poke a hole in something. So I was super grateful I had that because I was afraid I was going to have to go dig around in my husband's garage and who knows what would happen to me in there. Um, or us or him or I'd send him in there and I'd never see him again. Or he'd put a hole through the whole table here and I didn't want to do that either. So anyway, back to the box. I think it's a super great little kit. Um, the instructions are very clear, obviously because I said to you I have the uh, capacity of a chimp when it comes to reading patterns. So if I can do it, I can follow it, and it can turn out this cute, then you can totally do it. Um, so these are available online at Crosscut Sewing Co. Crosscut Sewing Co. Co. Dot com. And uh, they are $6.50 a kit. They come in three sizes. Super cute. Um, I can't say enough about it. I think for the for that price to get your leather handles, your brads, your box, and your perfectly fitting instructions, and I've made all three sizes so they perfectly fit, um, I can't imagine a better deal. So if you're looking for a cute little gift or you're looking for a cute little way to store your stuff in your sewing room and use up some of your fabrics, go out to Crosscut uh, Sewing Company and pick up a couple kits of your own. So, and thank you to Stephanie and the, the gang out over at Crosscut Sewing for sending me the kit. It was super fun. So, I enjoyed it. Um, until next time, happy quilting. <laughs>